Welcome to today's workshop, Integrating Social Justice Education in Your Course. Historically, the classroom has served as a platform for social change and proving ground for new ideas. An educator's role is to help students develop critical thinking, collaboration, and reflection skills necessary to participate in a diverse society. One way to promote these skills is through social justice education. In this workshop, we'll discover strategies and resources for promoting social justice in the classroom and raising students' awareness of social justice issues. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers, and I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator. And I'm also currently sharing the responsibilities of the Online Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. If you know anyone who's looking for a job in faculty development, we are currently on a search for our next full-time Online Learning Coordinator, who will also have some instructional design duties as well. Um, so please pass that on to, to anyone that you know who might be interested. Um, but I earned my PhD from NIU in 2016. I've been teaching college English for over 13 years, and I've been a faculty developer at NIU for the past two and a half years. Um, I'll be taking questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. So if you have specific questions related to what we're discussing, feel free to post them to the um, comments, uh, any comments or, or questions to the chat thread, and I'll address them as they come up. Um, I'll be able to see those notifications. So, all right, so let's get to know you in the text chat. Tell us what's your department or division, your role, instructor, professor, TA, um, what you hope to get out of this workshop. Hello, Susan. Oh, great. So um, some additional ideas for online. Um, we've got some uh, HHS, kinesiology, <clears throat> and physical education, uh, how to apply social justice education in courses where it may not always be clearly connected. And I will definitely talk about that today. I did my research on you all um, before um, this session and while I was getting ready for um, you know, and designing this workshop um, because I wanted to include examples that would be relevant to you. So I'll include, hopefully I've touched on each one of your disciplines um, with my examples throughout. Um, all knowledge leads to self-knowledge, definitely, Scott. Uh, economics, um, let's see, making real world connections, incorporating a focus on social justice, particularly environmental justice, um, looking for, for things you could do to make your students feel seen, that's excellent. Um, and some strategies for pre-service teachers. Okay, great. So um, in addition to telling us a little bit about yourselves. Tell us how you're doing today with an emoji in the chat. So how are you feeling? Where are you at? And this is a good strategy for, you know, starting off your, your online classes with your students too. you know, kind of gauge how they're doing, what they're feeling at that moment so that maybe you understand a little bit better their participation levels that day too. Okay. Let 
I definitely feel that that snoozy one for sure. All right, great. So I think probably the first question that we want to answer is why social justice? Uh, and essentially social justice education has some beneficial long-term effects. It helps students to develop empathy, self-reflection, critical thinking skills that are necessary to engage in meaningful dialogue about social justice issues. Um, it also helps students identify and practice how to respond to community and societal needs. And it helps students express how their social identities impact their engagement with others. One important concept to understanding the importance of integrating social justice into our courses is Marx's social reproduction theory, which shows the ways that social inequality is passed on from generation to generation. So what does that have to do with education? Well, essentially, we need an intersectional view of education. We can't talk about education without addressing race, class, gender, ability, sexuality, and politics, because education is a political act. If we don't consider intersectionality within our, our courses, we're essentially ignoring the identities present in our classrooms and our communities. However, agreeing that social justice is important and actually implementing social justice pedagogy are two different things. We want to move beyond just recognizing that social justice is important to finding specific ways to promote it meaningfully within our courses. So, For example, we might think of education generally as an equalizer, but we know that there are schools with significantly fewer resources than others, and there are many students, generally our black and brown students, who are stereotyped as soon as they walk onto our campus and into our classrooms. One way to fight back against those deeply entrenched systemic racist ideologies and policies inherent in education is to embrace social justice pedagogy. It may seem maybe more self-evident or intuitive to integrate social justice pedagogy into the humanities, for example, but many educators wonder why and how STEM or STEAM fields should integrate social justice education in their courses and programs. And I will definitely address that. So according to experts, scientists of color are more likely than their white peers to work on solving problems in their field that have clear connections to equity issues. Unfortunately, there's a scarcity of students of color in STEM fields for instance, while Black people are 12% of the U.S. population and 13% of undergraduates, they represent under 5% of undergraduate degrees in math, computer science, civil engineering, chemical engineering, and mechanical engineering. So why are so few Black students, for example, studying in STEM fields? Well, aside from the structural causes in K-12 education, there's a disconnect between Black students' interests and STEM faculty and employers' emphases. Black college students tend to be interested in social justice, but white STEM faculty and employers tend not to make social justice a focus within their fields. And that dissonance makes it more difficult for students of color to see how they fit into that field. So in other words, those students aren't leaving the discipline because they can't do the work. They're leaving because they don't see themselves in STEM fields as represented in their classes and the profession. That disconnect also puts our STEM industries and infrastructure at a dis dis distinct disadvantage because many social injustices require technical solutions. So for example, black and brown um, communities tend to be disproportionately affected by the consequences of climate change. And social justice minded engineers are needed to recognize and solve related infrastructure issues. Also, fixing healthcare disparities and inequities requires social justice focused medical expertise and technology. STEM disciplines, specifically, and college educators in general, to reflect on how they view students of color. Consider whether students of color are stereotyped as underprepared, even with evidence to the contrary, or don't belong or are unwelcome in the field. Another issue to consider is the disconnect between lived experiences of students and the focus in our classes. For example, having students gain technical knowledge and ex experience for its own sake, rather than helping them connect what they're learning to how they can affect social change. If STEM educators emphasize social justice in their courses, it's more likely that STEM workers of all backgrounds will begin tackling those issues. So I have a couple of books. Um, that I would like to introduce some quotes from. 
Um, I definitely recommend both of these books. Um, the first is from Equity Talk to Equity Walk, and it kind of hits at that point that I made about, you know, recognizing the need for equity or for social justice education and then actually putting that into practice. Um, so the authors of From Equity Talk to Equity Walk make a really great point in their preface. They say the growing racial tensions in our society and the impact it has had and will have on our individual psyche and who we are as a nation cannot be ignored and dismissed as isolated incidents because they keep adding up. Racism permeates every aspect of our country and the time to address the pervasive impact of ideologies fueled by hate is now. Uh, the other book that I want to, to bring up here is, is Everyone Really Equal? And this book is a great resource for faculty who want to integrate um, social justice education into their courses because it's a student focused book. Um, I'm actually using this book in one of my composition classes this semester, um, having students read it. So it's, it's really student focused how students um, can engage with their classes um, in social justice education. Um, so in this book, uh, Sensoy and D'Angelo say society is structured in ways that make us all complicit in systems of inequality. There's no neutral ground. Thus, an effective critical social justice course will unsettle mainstream perspectives and institutional discourses, challenge our views about ourselves, what we think we know about society, how it works, and our place in it. Unfortunately, when we are new to the examination of social relations, we only know one way to respond to ideas studied in the course. If the professor is saying that I participate in systems of injustice, such as racism, they are saying that I am a bad person, a racist. Later, we should come to understand that this is not what our professors are saying, and that binary ways of conceptualizing these issues, good, bad, racist, not racist, are part of what prevents us from seeing them. Um, later on, one of the most difficult concepts that students have when it comes to social sciences and humanities is intellectual humility. And the text points out an essential lesson that students need to learn and internalize, which is that opinions are not the same as informed knowledge. And that is something definitely that in my composition classes, you know, I try to <laughs> try to hit home with students and try to um, get them to see that. Um, but they, they define also critical thinking as not simply having different opinions. Critical thinking results in an informed perspective after engaging with new evidence and accounting for multiple layers of complexity. Simply having an opinion is not predicated on any accounting for new information or understanding or complexity. Popular opinions tend to be superficial and anecdotal and do not require that we understand the issue at all. For example, although someone might disagree that social science or social injustice exists, to be credible, they have to root their argument in an understanding of the knowledge that has already been established and demonstrate how their opinion brings new evidence for consideration. So um, let's talk about some specific approaches to including social justice in your courses. Um, so these are some specific strategies or things that you can practically do in your courses. One of them is acknowledging students. Um, and this was brought up in the chat. In order to teach your students in a way that's humanizing and affirming, you need to know who they are and where they come from. And that means learning about their communities, backgrounds, cultures, and families. It means acknowledging how they experience the world including the ways social justice touches their lives. So take an opportunity in the first week or so of class to get to know your students, create connections with your students, let them know that you see them. If they feel connected to your classroom community, they're more likely to engage and persist. And by getting to know your students, you can tailor your teaching to the social justice issues that are important to them. And I'll, I'll hit more on that later. Another strategy is to be honest about your biases. We all have biases as a result of living in the United States, which was founded upon white supremacy. So it's important to reflect on our personal prejudices and biases, um, implicit or explicit, and acknowledging and working actively to address and counteract those biases will make us better social justice educators specifically, but also just better educators in general. We can't ignore our biases or pretend we don't have them if we wanna to work toward a more just society and a more equitable educational experience for our students. 
Another strategy is, and this is this goes for just you know um, teaching in general, uh, course design in general, but also for social social justice minded course design. But using backwards framework centered in equity and inclusivity and how it connects to your content area. So think about where you want your students to be by the end of the semester and then work backward from that goal or outcome to develop your instructional methods, your learning activities, your assessments that are going to help your students achieve those goals. That'll also help you avoid tokenism or paying lip service to social justice while ultimately just maintaining the status quo. So what are your disciplinary and social justice goals for your course? Consider those first so that you can build your course to reflect those goals and synthesize them rather than just kind of sprinkling your existing course with social justice topics superficially without clear goals and connections to students and the discipline. Also discover what students already know. Our students enter into our classrooms with prior knowledge. That knowledge is tied to content areas connected to their own culturally relevant perspectives of the world. So embrace what they already know by working to find out what that prior knowledge is and then implement it into the curriculum. You can let them teach each other what they already know, and then you can work to build new knowledge together with them and expand their knowledge to areas in which they have less experience and expertise. So for example, Black students might come into a public health course with experience and knowledge of disparities in healthcare for and systemic racism's effect on Black patients. So use that knowledge and personal experience. Build upon it by providing students with more information about those systems and why they persist and allow them to examine how they can work towards dismantling systems of healthcare uh, oppression. Another strategy would be to incorporate social media into discussion. Social media platforms are where many students encounter and engage in social justice issues, including bullying, racial discrimination, gender stereotyping, LGBTQIA plus discrimination. So exploring those firsthand experiences can provide relatable examples of social injustice that could be explored as part of getting to know your students and learning about their experiences, knowledge, and backgrounds. But it could also be used as a jumping off point for bringing up those issues in the context of your course curriculum. Another strategy is to introduce students to activists. Um, introduce them to activists through different media. You can use books, you can use movies, video clips, articles, multimedia compositions, um, some other media type. You can for feature current activists as well as historic figures. You could also introduce well-known celebrities such as musicians or actors to spark discussions. Um, introducing students to activists who are diverse and close to their age will help them connect with those activists and the issues they're advocating. It'll also help them see the relevance of social justice to their own lives and experiences and help them see how they could make an impact on social justice issues. Social justice activism isn't exclusive to older citizens. Um, we, we've seen that, especially in the past few years. Young activists have made and continue to make significant contributions. Uh, examples include survivors of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, High School in Parkland, Florida, like David Hogg and X Gonzalez, who have led a movement aimed at gun control policies. Uh, Greta Thunberg, who became a household name at 16 for her climate change protests. Or Marley Diaz, an activist who launched the hashtag 1000 Black Girl Books, highlighting literature featuring, featuring Black female protagonists when she was just 11 years old. So by raising awareness of social justice issues, providing concrete examples of the difference social justice advocates can make, educators can help students become socially conscious adults who advocate for social justice. You can also uh, invite guest speakers to talk more directly with your students. So for example, a local community activist could help engage students, give them more personal and local context for broader social justice con concerns. Um, so for example, a local labor union representative could discuss with economic students how labor unions affect the distribution of income in union-friendly states versus right-to-work states. Media coverage um, of current issues could also be discussed. Um, so timely issues like immigration, racial injustice, healthcare in inequity, climate change impacts, voting rights, economic inequality uh, could help teach students valuable skills like critical thinking, separating fact and informed knowledge from opinion and fake news, 
It would also help expose students to diverse perspectives. It would help them recognize injustice and provide them with an outlet to express their perspectives. So for instance, you could use media coverage of COVID-19's impact on nursing homes to discuss racial and socioeconomic inequities in elder care and attitudes towards aging in, for example, a relevant family and consumer sciences course. Project-based learning um, is another strategy for engaging students. You could integrate learning activities and projects that promote engagement with social justice through project-based learning, um, which would allow small groups of students to focus on specific causes or issues, to discuss their unique view viewpoints, personalize their learning experience, and create a relevant deliverable to demonstrate what they've learned through that process. Um, for an English composition course, for example, students could use project-based learning to collaborate on crafting proposals for solutions to local issues in social justice, uh, or to write effective persuasive letters to local, state, or congressional representatives. So one important approach to student-centered education is asking students what matters to them. What do they want to focus on? What are they passionate about? What affects them on a personal or familial or community level? Allow students to connect what they're learning in your classes to what matters to them and then guide them as they make those connections so that they'll be more engaged learners. So for example, sports leadership is dominated by white men. While students and student athletes as well as professional athletes are a diverse group, that's not ne necessarily reflected in leadership around 79% of athletic directors are white men. Nearly 90% of faculty athletic representatives are white. 87.5% of head football coaches and 100% of conference commissioners are white. In the NFL, for example, head coaches of color represent only 13% of all head coaches. So a sports management course could examine racial gaps in sports leadership careers for students who are interested in breaking down those systemic barriers to access to success in the field. And to examine what institutions say publicly about, about diversity versus the inequities that their internal policies produce and perpetuate. Uh, another strategy for promoting social justice education is um, a social justice classroom climate that is critical in nature. Um, so any social justice classroom should be critical in nature. Um, it should have those difficult conversations, make people feel uncomfortable a little bit. Um, so we should be constantly encouraging students to question the world around them, as well as the school that they attend and our own teaching and learning practices. Um, so we should encourage that questioning because that questioning of authority, that questioning uh, of uh, why we're doing what we're doing, of policies and procedures and approaches to learning um, will all be valuable skills as they move out of education and into the workforce um, and into society um, and become informed and engaged citizens. So we wanna give students opportunities to critique and construct their own opinions and interpretations of your teaching and the overall school culture, as well as issues within our unique professional disciplines. So just um, to kind of round out the discussion, and then of course, I will leave it open for um, questions or comments, um, your own experiences as well. Um, but some of the benefits of social justice education for students and, and what, what it does for students. Uh, when students learn to recognize and think more about injustice, they're more likely to become informed and engaged citizens. They're also more likely to turn knowledge into action. So educators could expose students to the different forms that social justice advocacy takes, and those include edu educating themselves about social justice issues, engaging in conversations with friends and family members, advocating for social justice in their schools and workplaces, uh, contacting government officials to advocate for change, participating in or leading fundraising efforts, making choices to support or avoid businesses based on ethical behavior, such as to whom or which organizations the company donates money, 
organizing group events or discussions, participating in rallies, meetings, or protests, and pointing out social injustice and standing up for others when it's appropriate and safe to do so. So if you want to change the world, make it more socially just, education is a great place to start. And considering the rapid transformation of the United States socially, culturally, racially, linguistically, the path to a more just education system is to adopt a focused pursuit of social justice and teaching and learning practice. Um, and I see that Jocelyn is here. Um, so if anyone has questions about any of what I've discussed today, um, or just questions about maybe your specific uh, discipline, please do. You can either uh, turn on your microphone and speak. You could post to the chat. Um, so I'll give you a second to think about that. And thank you for joining us, Jocelyn. Uh, Jocelyn, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning, everyone. So Jocelyn Santana, hope all of you all are doing well. I'm with Academic Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, glad to have you or be here with you all. Um, sorry I was a little bit late. Um, but if, um, if there's any questions that you might have or any um, contact information, or you, I can give you my contact information, so jsantana at niu.edu. Um, and you could always uh, contact me directly in terms of applicability of um, these concepts or these themes on your actual, um, you know, pedagogical approaches or within your class classroom structures. Great. Thanks, Jocelyn. So, yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can post to the chat um, if that's how you feel most comfortable participating or you can turn on your microphone and speak as well. And Susan had asked in the, in the chat um, whether this list is in writing anywhere, and I can send you send you the the list um, in my follow up email as well. And this is also being recorded, so I'll send you the link to the recording on YouTube um, in my follow up email too, if you wanted to come back. Any questions? Scott, do you have any questions? I'm going to pick on you because I know you. <laughs> OK, great. No problem. I'm glad that it was clear, Anna. Yeah, and if you want any more, you know, examples, um, either of, of any of those approaches to for your specific discipline, please let us know. Um, so in terms of activists on campus, I'm sorry, Amanda. No, no, go right ahead. I was just about to. Yep, yep. Please do. So in terms of activists on campus, there are opportunities, um, not just for actual like speakers and presentations, but also for um, opportunities for students to get involved. So there's this program called Power, which is um, people organizing weekend empowerment retreat. And so Power happens in the spring semester generally. Um, and um, they do have, th this is an opportunity to teach students how to become social activists and to identify causes that they are passionate about and that they want to work towards. And we do bring in guest speakers and activists, people to, that are out there between grassroots movements to come in and do a lot of the education. It takes place over a weekend, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and that's a really great opportunity. But in terms of actual speakers and presentations that might be coming in, um, it's really a good idea to stay in contact and follow what um, is happening with the cultural centers. Um, the cultural centers are bringing in um, speakers on a on a consistent and frequent basis including uh we had uh Prisca, um last i think it was two weeks ago maybe 
um, that came in and, and was was speaking on on activism and and advocacy and allyship. Um, and we have a couple of other uh, speakers coming in. I think even. Uh, I can't remember, um, but look at the undocumented uh, students uh, support services page. Um, there is a speaker coming in to do uh, some some work within um, social advocacy work for um, undocumented immigrants. So Scott has a good question about how to reach students who might hear the word social or the term social justice and shut down. Um, because, you know, they have a certain perception of what social justice is and that it's, you know, very um, liberal and they might be a conservative students. So how how might we address that in our classes, Jocelyn? Yeah, that's a fair question. And I actually really appreciate that, that question. So a strategy or a technique is to actually just, you know, put aside the language. Um, so like, for example, for example, um, I do have a program um, where uh, we do restorative justice healing circles. And so um, in the healing circles, um, when we're having conversations, I don't say, okay, let's all come together. We're going to do a healing circle. I just say, we're going to go ahead and have a conversation about. And so I think those are approaches that you can have is instead of, of using the language, maybe at least initially, you can introduce the concepts and navigate conversations around concepts. Does that make sense? It's almost always like even user friendly or people friendly. I think um, when you just surround yourself around the top, the concept or the context of the um, idea rather than just go into, oh, you know, this is white supremacy or this is oppression or whatever. Sometimes that can just get overwhelming and we can lose people in the, in the process. Thanks, Jocelyn. So um, Marsha at the beginning had said that she was interested in, in getting some strategies for pre-service teachers, um, and she's in the School of Health Studies. Um, so do you have any any tips maybe for um, strategies for pre-service teachers and, and promoting social justice education with them and maybe kind of having that extend beyond into their teaching? Yeah, um, thanks for that question. So we actually have been doing a lot of uh, work um, with the College of Ed um, with regards to pre-service teaching. Um, and so my recommendation is that maybe you reach out to um, Daryl uh, Dugas, D-O-U-G-A-S, I believe is his last name. Um, he's, he's a current I think course it's facilitator. D-U-G-A-S. Yeah, I believe I believe so, or D O U G A S. I, I'm not sure. Um, but um, but um, Daryl um, has partnered with myself and um, Jay Pappas, which is also an ADEI, um, to do some specific uh, work with pre-service teaching. Um, to get them ready to go out into the into the classroom environment and have some more very direct um, conversations around maybe how to tackle bias or address bias in 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 their experiences, you know, and navigating some situations because I know that some of our even our clinical programs have found that they have sent out um, students into the practice and and maybe the practice isn't necessarily the most inclusive or um, equitable or create those sense of belonging. And so then it gets into those kind of spaces of how do you support them, the students. And so um, if you want, you can email me directly and I can go ahead and, and we do have PowerPoint. We do have workshops for that. Um, I believe we're actually doing a workshop here next in this next month or so um, for secondary education um, teachers, again, with this whole pre-service um, uh, concept. So um, if you reach out to us, we would be able to give you some of those pointers that we share um, with this population. Thanks, Jocelyn. We also have um, a, someone from the economics department, Anna, um, who 
wants to incorporate a focus on social justice, particularly environmental justice. Um, so there's that part. And then she also is looking for things that she could be doing specifically to make her students feel seen. What was the last part? I'm sorry, Amanda. Um, she's looking for, for strategies to make her, the things that she could do to make her students feel seen. Okay, um, so are you are you all aware, I don't know if you're all aware, but there is a faculty toolkit. Um, and Amanda, I don't know if you can find that or not, um, but there is a faculty toolkit on NIU's homepage. And on there, there's um, a lot of resources that are available that go into, um, you know, how to um, manage a classroom space, how to create common standards, um, so then that way you can facilitate dialogue and conversations um, in terms of um, seeing student or helping students be seen. I think that that's a really interesting conversation, especially with the dynamic of uh, faculty and, and, and those, the structures within the classroom. Um, sometimes that looks and sounds and, and a little bit differently. Um, sometimes that's um, figuring out and sharing power dynamics. Um, um in the in the classroom so it's it's engaging the students and having them be active participants um in the classroom so then that way they can uh feel like their voices and their perspectives are being he heard i think that that's another philosophy as you also talks about you know um cultural wealth and cultural knowledge and so that's another approach to helping um students feel seen is how is it that we are tapping into their um, experiences and their knowledge that is coming into the classroom um, and how is that validated. Um, I think representation in terms of the content, the curriculum is important. And so being able to see yourself reflected or see some tie in back to um, societal change, maybe it's not necessarily a direct uh, racial, ethnic, um, gender, uh, sexual orientation representation, but maybe it's opportunities to see how the work in the classroom can be applied back to um, actual social change. I think that those are some examples of how to help students be seen. Awesome, thank you. And just a, my own question, which is kind of based on some of what um, people said that they teach. Um, so what would be, a strategy for or just kind of an approach to incorporating social justice into um, even in a small way into a course that you wouldn't normally uh, think of as being able to do that. So like um, Anna mentioned that she teaches, you know, just kind of basic math uh, for the most part. So is there a way to maybe incorporate social justice education into courses that are more kind of nuts and bolts like that? Or in what ways can we maybe integrate that into those courses? Um, I actually have a PowerPoint presentation on um, STEM um, in particularly and in incorporating um, some of the approaches. I think looking at short-term and long-term goals and, and even um, how, how um, conversations are being held within the spaces is important. Um, oftentimes, when I think about also um, the position that some of our students find themselves in, um, especially in, in some of those like remedial type of courses, um, I think that there's room and space for conversation in regards to even why some of those dynamics can actually happen. But um, I would need to, like, maybe send you, Amanda, that presentation. Um, again, okay. yeah. some, some, some of this stuff, that's a really great question, and I, I want to give you more specifics, but in, in when it comes to STEM, um, there are very specific um, strategies that I have highlighted, um, but that, that gets more into um, workshops that don't come up too often for me, so I just want to get that right. Okay, great. Yeah, that would be excellent. Thank you, Jocelyn. Any other questions? Um, oh, and I Anna is asking, yeah. 
Yeah, I do presentations, um, department presentations, um, larger scale presentations, colleges, um, you know, so definitely there are opportunities there for engagement. Um, and then for anybody that's interested, we do have a code institute um, and that code institute is on conversations on diversity and equity. Um, and so, so that's an opportunity for um, uncovering or thinking through some of those harder topics that um, may play out these days in terms of, um, you know, critical race theory, like there's an introduction to that. There's an introduction to the oppression matrix. There's a uh, discussion on, on bias, um, you know, and um, things along that line. So, um, so if you're interested in doing that, again, you can send me an email or send it to J Pappas, P A P P A S, um, and let them know um, that you would be interested in participating in that. Um, like I said, I, I didn't bring with me um, more STEM specific um, information, but I do have it and I'm more than happy to send it to you, Amanda. And if you want to get it out to the group, that'd be great. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm just um, posting, a, I posted a link to the code workshops page um, and then I'm going to post the, your email and, and Jay's email as well to the chat here. There you go. So yeah, if you want to contact either of them or if you want to request a code workshop, um, there is the information for that. And um, you can also become a code facilitator. I'm a code facilitator. Uh, that's another step to take as well. Any other questions? Thanks, Anna. You, oh, great. Thanks, Scott. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can stick around. Um, here are some resources, and I'll send these to you in my follow-up email. Uh, obviously not an exhaustive list of sources, um, but just some as a kind of a starting off point. Um, to think about uh, social justice education, um, including the, the couple of books that I, I mentioned at the beginning uh, of today's workshop. Um, and just thank you very much um, for joining me today to talk about integrating social justice education in your classes. Um, the two books that I mentioned are available through the library and they should be available uh, as eBooks through the library as well, um, because they are two books that I've done uh, book chats on through the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, so you should be able to access them as ebooks. Um, and if you have any other questions, oh, go ahead, Jocelyn. And Amanda, what I was also going to say, I think what's important um, in particular to like the STEM fields is that we want to be mindful of like neutral language. I think I think sometimes the the neutrality of language can be um, um, one of those challenging aspects of thinking, well, this is you know, this is math or this is science, you know, but thinking about how potential bias can come in into those subject matters, whether it be student to student or um, um, content or bias of even faculty to a student. I think that those are some important dynamics to pay attention to. And that's just not, that's not only um, STEM, but that's any real across the board, any, um, any faculty, right? Any classroom dynamic. Um, so I think that that's, that's an important um, piece to explore as um, we're engaging and thinking about how social justice fits into our day-to-day -day interactions. Um, so anyway, again, I engage in these conversations and talk, but that's just kind of a snippet of kind of paying attention to um, going back to your question of how how is it that we incorporate social justice education thanks so much that's awesome um so yeah if anyone has any questions you can feel free to contact me um you can contact 
um, Jocelyn or Jay as well um, for, for, you know, especially if you want, you know, a specific workshop for your, your department um, or your college. Um, but I will also be sending out an, a follow-up email to everyone who attended today's workshop with links to all of the resources mentioned, and that includes uh, links to the books within our library database so that you can access those more easily as well. Um, and if you have any, any last thoughts or questions, you can absolutely stick around. I'll stop the, the recording right now, um, but have a great week for everybody who um, is ready to leave today. <laughs>